Welcome, we meet again. Tonight, we look at another parable of Jesus. And this parable is about the unjust steward. Now, this is a very difficult parable. Difficult because it was a negative character that Jesus used to teach a spiritual lesson. Now, you can imagine that using a negative example to teach a spiritual lesson. And I want to emphasize here is that Jesus wants us to learn the principle but not to follow the method. This is very important. Learn the principle but please don't follow what the steward did. A crisis does not make a man, but it shows what a man is made of. And it's true. Crisis doesn't make men, but it shows what that man or the woman or the woman is made up of. And tonight, we'll look at the scripture. It's taken from Luke chapter 16, verses 1 to 9. Jesus told his disciples, There was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him in and asked him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management because you cannot be manager any longer. The manager said to himself, What shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. I am not strong enough to dig and I am ashamed to beg. I know what? I will do so that when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their house. So he called in each of his master's debtors. He asked the first, How much do you owe my master? 800 gallons of olive oil, he replied. The manager told him, Take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 400. Then he asked the second, And how much do you owe? 1,000 bushel of wheat, he replied. He told him, take your bill and make it 800. The master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than are the people of the light. Verse 9, I tell you, use worldly, worldly wealth to gain friends for yourself so that when it comes and when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwelling. Now indeed, as you read these nine verses, you know that this is a very difficult parable. Now let me first explain a bit about uh, <clears throat> the background of this kind of story. Now Jesus would not have just told just tell this this, uh, parable by concocting something that is not true. Very likely uh, during Jesus' time, the the rich Pharisees or those rich men then, they they were concerned about eating, making merry and, and be happy. And so their wealth, their properties are all entrusted to stewards or to housekeeper to manage for them and and they are not bothered about any other thing just like you know you remember Potiphar in the Old Testament Joseph master the Bible tells us that his master did not bother with anything that Joseph was doing he was concerned only about eating and he left everything else to the young capable Joseph now this master, he had hired a manager or this steward to take care of his possession, his property, his business. But unfortunately, he found that this manager was a dishonest man. He has wasted his properties. And so he called him in and informed him that he will be replaced, he will be removed from his post. And so in the crisis, the steward, the, the, the manager, he's in a crisis. 
And during this crisis, suddenly he discovered himself, who he is. Now see, when a man is rich or when you have possession and you have power, you have position, you have status, sometimes we do not know who we are. We are living in a cloud. We are living in an illusion. But when we are brought down to earth, when you lose everything, suddenly you realize who are you or who you are. You see, he received, he received salary from his master and therefore it is expected of him to be faithful. But unfortunately, he was a dishonest man and he did not discharge his duty. The Bible in 1 Corinthians 4, 2 says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. So you see, there is expectation about a steward being faithful to his masters. And so now the owner wants to take back the right to manage. And the steward realized that by then he owns nothing. He would have lost everything. Prior to that, his status, his position, his power were all delegated authorities. It was because the master entrusted it to him. And when the master withdrew, everything is gone. He was a steward, and therefore, the money he manages is not his. It belongs to the master. And so in this crisis, suddenly he discovers his true self. Who is he? So I hope that we will not have to come to a point whereby we are facing a crisis before we know who we are. Today, do you and I have the wisdom to know who we are? Secondly, in the crisis, the steward discovered the true meaning of life. Now, what is the true meaning of life? Well, to some people, life is to what? To just be happy, be peaceful, or be healthy. That could be their, their meaning in life. Now, this parable was spoken after the parable of the prodigal son. Now, I, I believe that there is a relationship between the, this parable and or the parable of the political son and this parable. Because this parable is a very difficult parable to explain. Because Jesus used a negative example to teach a positive lesson. Right? Remember? But if you string these two parables together, then we get a clearer picture of what Jesus was trying to teach. When we string these two parables together, it shows us three types of life's philosophies. Well, in life, there is life's philosophy. How one thinks, what is the value of a person's, you know, he, how, how he looks and how she looks at things, the value he attaches, etc. Now, in the parable of the prodigal son, now, we all know that the, this prodigal son, the younger brother, wasted his life. He took the assets from his father. Straight away, he went away. He wasted all his money. He spent on wine, song, and women, probably. And when he had wasted all his money, he, be, he was reduced to nothing. He became so poor that he has to sleep with pigs. And so he wasted his life until he realized his folly and then he came back to the father. But he really wasted his life. Then we have the elder brother in the parable of the prodigal son. Now who was the elder brother? The elder brother seems to be an average person. He's not a troublemaker. He never gives trouble to the father. He just lives on a daily basis. He works faithfully. His life is a straight line. He doesn't have ups and downs. 
But you know, this kind of life is a very monotonous life. And this life is what? He just spent his life. Now, I hope that first, we will not be like the prodigal son, wasted our life. Secondly, neither do we want to just spend our lives. Now, if we are here on this earth just for a few decades, maybe six or seven or eight decades, and then we just spend our life, I think it's quite boring, right? Then we have to come to this steward. The third philosophy of life is what? This steward, before he was notified that he would lose his job, he was just living his life, enjoying his, li- his life probably. But when he was facing the crisis, suddenly he awakens. And he did something very wise. He invested his life for the future. Oh, this is what I believe Jesus was trying to teach us. It was a negative example, yes. But it was in the crisis that he knows how to invest his life for the security of his future. That's where his wisdom is. So there are three philosophies. Wasting one's life, spend, just spend one's life, or invest our life. Now as we listen to this message, are you wasting your life? Am I wasting mine? Are you just spending your life? And am I doing the same? Or we have the wisdom like this steward. We are investing our life for the future. Now, if up to this point you do not know Jesus, may I urge you and may I encourage you to come to our Savior, to our Lord, to our Jesus, and then invest your life in His kingdom. Invest your life for His sake. And you and I will be blessed if we do that. Well, in life, there are people who destroy their future by living just for the present because they do not care about tomorrow. That is their philosophy in life too. Some destroy the present and then they hope that there will be a good future. You know, Hokkien say, Tan Ku ah. You know, hope long, long. You know, you destroy your present and then hope that the future will be better. You think it is possible? Well, the steward has this wisdom. Up to the point, I tell you, when he was notified. When he was notified that he will soon lose his job. Then wisdom came. Then there is this realization. And then he began to invest for the future. Before that, no. Before that, before this reality hits him, he was just like anybody else, with power, with money, with status. He was living life like anybody else. But when reality kicks in, that he was soon reduced to nothing, suddenly the bright sparks in him breaks forth. And he learned to invest his life for the future. And this is the, the part that Jesus wanted to highlight to us all. So when the crisis comes, he saw light. He saw life in, with a new light. See, sometimes it's very sad that we ourselves too, when, and when everything is smooth sailing, we may not see life in a certain perspective. You know, we view life with a certain perspective, with a certain lens. A certain view, a uh, very stereotype of view. But until the crisis comes, suddenly you realize that there is perspective in life. Now, I know of people. Before, before a crisis hit their life, they were like anybody else. Until a life-threatening sickness plagued them. And, and, and the sickness is so serious that it could have terminated them because they contracted a, terminated, a terminal illness. A terminal illness will terminate a person. And then when God 
reaches down and touch this person, heal this person. You know what happened? Their life change. Their value change. Their goal in life change. See, now they see life with new perspective because when a crisis hit them, suddenly they realize the value of life. Now, are we prepared as we face a crisis? Are we prepared in terms of our work, our jobs, our business, that when a crisis comes, it affects us? Now, in this pandemic, we know that people's job, business, etc. are affected. But are we prepared? Now, to a certain degree, we can, we, certain things are not under our control. Certain things are beyond our control. It's a fact. Nonetheless, but we still can have the wisdom to confront and face the crisis squarely before us. And then may we ask God to also give us the wisdom like what has been demonstrated by this steward, that he has the wisdom to turn a crisis into an opportunity. Now, how do we turn crisis into an opportunity. I think this is the key. Thirdly, in the crisis, the steward discovered his master. Now, up to this point, perhaps he and the master wasn't really close. And as, as I said before, the master who have just entrusted everything to him and the master seldom even see his face. And they may meet, but perhaps they may have met once or twice a year. I do not know. I'm just guessing. So he does not really know the master. But during this crisis, he began to know the master. Why? Because he realized that the master was gracious to him. Well, the master could have sent him to jail for his dishonesty. He cheated the master. Well, the master could have just sent him to jail. But the master did not do that. Very graciously, the master treated him. And the master just wanted to end everything peacefully and say, okay, I think you settle and you make sure that you account for all the, you know, all the numbers, my business, etc. And then when you close the book nicely, then you will be replaced. I will hire a new manager to take over your job. Now suddenly he realized that his master was a good master. The master was very gracious to him. Well, when he realized the master was a good master, he started to think about schemes that will help him to ensure his, the security of his future. Well, coming to talking about master, I think we also have a good master. Right? Who is our master? Our Lord Jesus is our master. And our Lord Jesus is gracious to us too. When we sin, we should have gone to hell. We should have, we have to pay for our, our sins. But God settled our account by sending Jesus to die for us. So we have a good master. So I hope that if you, are, you do not know this master, after this message, you will see and realize that our master is a gracious, caring master for you and I. Well, coming back to this parable, this steward, he began to, uh, before he was dismissed, right? He, he coined all the debtors and he asked them to change the numbers on their IOU, on their bills. So from the large figure reduced to a smaller figure, you know, almost half. And by this, actually, all the debtor whom he helped will owe him an obligation. So that in the future, when he was dismissed, they will take him in and treat him, take care of him, treat him well, and take care of him. That was his wisdom. So the Stewart accomplished two things when he was notified of his soon dismissal. So he makes some friends who can help him in the future. Now you see, he knows how to make friends for the future. 
I think this is the key. We all need friends. We all need friends. Not only for the future, but we all need friends. And we need true friends. Not the Chinese say. Those wine and food friends. When there is wine, when there is food, then they are friends. When there is no wine and there is no food, there are no friends. No, we need good and true friends. So the manager showed his shrewdness and he created an opportunity in this crisis. You see, this is where his wisdom comes. He created opportunity in a crisis. He, he used the present opportunity to secure his future. And Jesus is using this bad example to teach a true spiritual lesson how to secure our future, how to invest our future wisely. Probably in the crisis, he also discovered the true value of possession. Before the crisis, the steward lived just for things. Now we can imagine that every day he would have good food, good wine, good music. And then he lived for possession. But then when the crisis hits him, he knew that soon he will be reduced to nothing. And the possession anyway wasn't his, it was his master's. He was a steward. He was a caretaker. And some without the status, without the authority, he would have been reduced to nothing. So you see, material or possession is not everything. What is the true value of possession? Well, up to now he stole from his master to enjoy a good life. Then he realized that things are not an end in itself. Those possessions are not an end in itself. What is the true value of possession? Not too long ago, I read in the media, right? I think it's Facebook, about a rich man, a very, very rich man. But he was sickly. In fact, terminally ill. He was so ill that he could not eat the food a normal man eat. He could not sleep like a normal man sleep. He could not go to places that a normal man could go. But he had all the money. But all the money that he had could not give him a comfortable, enjoyable life. He was lying on a dead, death bed, so to speak. Maybe hooked up with all the tubes, with all the machines attached to keep him alive. But he has all the possessions. And all the money he had means nothing to him now. He could have traded his possession for just a healthy body. So you see, money can buy us a home. But money cannot buy us sleep. Money, money can buy us vitamin. Vitamins. But money cannot buy us health. So see, that's the true value of possession. So what is the value of possession? Let's be wise about it. I'm not saying that, well, money is bad, don't get me wrong. I don't mean to say that poor means holy or poor means you are closer to God. No, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that we must have a true possession about possession, about material things. Now, Jesus did not approve, by the way, Jesus did not approve this Steward's methodology. Jesus did not approve his ways of dealing, but Jesus approved his change of heart. That he has this wisdom to invest for the future security. That, I believe, is the main lesson in this parable. Number five. In the crisis, the steward also discovered that what is true friendship. What is true friendship? Before his dismissal, he may not have treated the people he was working with well. Now you can imagine, and I think most of the time it happened this way. People who have a... Uh, okay, I'll be honest, I must be very careful to say this. 
uh, sometimes we do see that people who have status, who have power, who have authority, sometimes they talk very loudly. They are ill-mannered. And not all, not all. But sometimes we do see such people. You know, in, in Chinese we call it hu jia hu wei. They, they, they just abuse their status, the authority they have at that point of time. Until one day when those authorities and those status were removed from him, or then suddenly become very humble. Now, he might not have treated his colleagues and the people who owe his master's money well. He do not have probably friends. But now in the crisis, suddenly he realized that friends, friendships, is important. He needs friends. And so now he learned to use possession to build friendship. Now, the way he used the methodology or the method he used is, no, please don't follow. He is taking his master's money and to build his friendship, to secure his future. Jesus did not approve that. Jesus did not approve that. Okay, that's why I say this is a very hard parable to teach. Very hard. Right, because there, there was this negative example. His method was wrong. But his philosophy was right. He invests in the future. That is what Jesus wanted to teach. So Jesus is not advocating that we get our friend involved in some unscrupulous or crooked deal so that we can also blackmail them into helping us. No, Jesus is not teaching us about that. But Jesus is emphasizing that friendship is indeed important. Do you have friends? Now, I, let me tell you this. Sometimes when you are in a crisis, you suddenly discover who are your true friends. And sometimes more than friends, it will be the people who are closest to you, your relatives, who will remain. Even friends can also desert us. Do you have such people? In a crisis, sometimes you see the true identity or the true person, who they are in a crisis. Well, we have what we call good Weather friends. But do we have friends who are see us through in a crisis? We need to build up such friendship. And you value such friends if you have. And praise the Lord if you have. Because true friends are hard to come by. But first of all, you'll be a true friend for somebody so that they can reciprocate your true and valuable friendship. Now, in this parable, we realize that this steward demonstrated to us that we need not be defeated by a crisis. In fact, none of us need to be defeated by a crisis. Today, I do not know whether you are facing a crisis. Like I said earlier on, it could be a money crisis, financial crisis, it could be a, a business crisis, it could be a career crisis, it could be family crisis, it could be this crisis or that crisis. But we need not be defeated by a crisis. And we can turn crisis into opportunities. I know people who have lost their job and then they were forced to jump into the fire to start a business. And we became rich after that. Now, without a crisis of losing their job, they probably would not have become a business person. So a lot of time, people are forced into a situation because of a crisis. So not all crises are bad. So we can turn crisis into opportunities. Now, in conclusion, we look at this parable. As I said earlier on, this is a difficult parable to teach. For one simple reason. The example of the steward was a negative example. And Jesus is not teaching us to follow his example. Jesus is teaching us about his philosophy of life after or when he faces 
that crisis. So we come back to the parable of the prodigal son. Well, let's not be like the prodigal son that wasted his life. Now we have only one life and we better don't waste our life. Neither do we want to be like the elder brother who just spent his life. His life has no ups and downs. His life is monotonous. He lived by the day and the weeks and the month and the year and it never changed. So he just spent his life meaningless. He has no achievement. He has no legacy to leave behind. But the steward, his philosophy is he invested his life. It's never too late to invest your life and mine. Never too late. Maybe until now you have not invested. Never mind. Well, until now, at some point you may thought you may have thought that, or you have indeed not need you have thought that. You have wasted your life or you have spent your life. Never mind. Can you and I now start begin? To invest our life. It's never too late to invest our life now. Like this steward. He did the wisest thing. And that is not to waste his life, not to spend his life, but to invest his life to secure his future. I hope that this parable will serve as an encouragement to us that in a crisis, we need not be knocked down. We can face a crisis courageously and turn a crisis into opportunities. Never too late to invest our life for the future. And in talking about investing our life, it's good to invest our life in God's kingdom. It's great wisdom to invest yours and my our lives in God's work. So let's continue to serve God. Let's continue to, 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 to propagate His kingdom. And so that more people will enjoy quality spiritual life. God bless you and good night.